Rules change. Uniforms turn into space suits. Stadium capacities quadruple. But bad officiating, ah, uh, that is college football's one constant. Actually, in Auburn's first varsity game played in Jordan Hare, then Auburn Stadium, it wasn't so much a case of bad officiating as it was a case of the timekeeper, who was either a Georgia Tech or Texas A&M grad, just being an idiot or something. You'd think that the guy with the watch in his pocket could deem it pretty incumbent upon himself when asked how much time was left in the game to actually, you know, communicate how much time was left in the game and not with some ambiguous hand gestures, but with his mouth, with clarity, specificity. I mean, this was a game with serious implications for an entire football program's self-image, an entire people. The first game in your stadium? You're supposed to win that, especially when you're favored, not just not lose it. Surely he had to know that the lack of urgency in Auburn's play calling as time wound down meant that the players and coaches were obviously confused about how many hikes they had left, yet he's going to be all coy when asked about it? Dude had one job. He blew it. There's no getting around it. I'm sure the 1939 edition of the Blame Ourselves Brigade was out in full force the next morning, a la Auburn versus Texas A&M 2014, attempting with their we-didn't-deserve-to-win-any-waysing to establish some sense of pain-numbing moral superiority over petty fans of other teams who would dare to base themselves with complaints about a crap call at a critical point in the game, as if it were logically impossible to be both disappointed in your team's performance and irate over an official's incompetence. But the frustrating thing was that if you looked at the stats, you'd come away thinking that Auburn did kind of deserve to win. Except for the score, the Columbus Daily Inquirer wrote, it was all Auburn. The Tigers had 324 yards to the Gators' 174, thanks in large part to star halfback Dynamite Dick McGowan, who rushed for more yards than Florida's entire team, thanks in large part to playing literally every second of the game. McGowan was the workhorse of a weakened Auburn team having to kick, run, and pass, the Birmingham News wrote. Sure, he missed an easy field goal early in the game and another one late, but he intercepted Gator passes, returned Florida kicks, and did everything there had to be done, except catch his own passes. His punts were sticking to the sidelines better than lime. Dynamite Dick finally tied it up in the fourth quarter, lobbing a 25-yard touchdown pass to back up end Babe McGeehee in the corner of the end zone. Then he came in and kicked the extra point. Except in scoring, which after all is the thing, the Tigers ran rings around the Alligators, the news reported. Late in the fourth, Auburn was knocking on the door again, moving the ball at will. They zigzagged 60 yards down the field on two electrifying runs for a final comeback drive that was destined to be framed. The ball was on the Florida 11. Quarterback Lloyd Cheatham started slowing things down. They were going to take their time to score. But unbeknownst to everyone but God and Muty the ref, they didn't have any time to take. There were a couple of runs up the middle, a five-yard delay of game penalty, Somehow, it ended up being second down on the three-yard line. As the players unpiled, Cheatham asked how much time was left, but the zebra didn't say anything. He just held up two fingers. Two minutes? Okay, awesome. Plenty of time to punch it in or kick a field goal. Cheatham yelled hike and gave the ball to old Gator Cantrell. Gator got down to the Gator 2. Ball game. Read it and weep. This is from the Birmingham News. Take it for what it's worth, but they were saying around the campus last night a misunderstanding in remaining time might have cost Auburn a well-earned victory. It was noticeably at the time that Auburn evidently thought nothing of a time hazard and did not try to score on any single play, and last night they were saying the Tiger quarterback in asking for time left calculated the timekeeper meant two minutes were remaining when he held up two fingers. Actually, they said only two seconds remained. At any rate, the game ended with Auburn having the ball on Florida's two-yard line on third down. That paragraph gives the most details about what happened, but the clock confusion was played up in pretty much all coverage of the game. The Columbus Daily Inquirer opened with, Father Time, that undeniable old cuss, cracked the whip over the Auburn Tigers at the Florida two-yard stripe this afternoon to force them to submit to a 7-7 deadlock in a football game that dedicated this new stadium before 13,000 roaring fans. The lead in the AP story on the game that ran in papers across the country... Many of those 13,000 fans who watched the Auburn Tigers dedicate a new stadium Thursday will contend for days to come that the timer's gun robbed the home team of a victory over the plucky Gators of Florida. Had the game been played two years later, it wouldn't have been an issue. 
At the 1941 homecoming game against Clemson, Auburn debuted its first real modern scoreboard, thanks almost entirely to donations from prominent Auburn alumni in Montgomery. But the guy doing a lot of the fundraising, WSFA owner Howard Pill, was actually a Bama grad. Don't tell anyone. Auburn students wanted it bad for obvious, still painful reasons. One doesn't really see the necessity of such an object until he views a football game without one to refer to every few minutes. The Plainsman rode in 1941 after the Tigers shut up Louisiana Tech at home early in the season. Six weeks later, there it was. 16 feet high, 40 feet wide, concrete, wood, steel, score, downs, yardage, and most important, the time. It was, so the joke went, the best working time piece on campus, clocks in the classrooms being notoriously unreliable back in the day. When a person is watching a game between two closely equal teams, the score is 7-6, to six. the spectator's team is behind, and there is one minute left to play. The scoreboard at the head of the stadium is watched almost as much as the two teams on the playing field, the Plainsman wrote. And what with the two fingers equals two seconds insanity that kept the Tigers from dedicating their stadium with a W only three home games earlier... That was probably nowhere truer than Auburn Stadium. Hey, if you'd like to help keep this kind of content coming to YouTube, to the dot-coms and all that, please consider supporting my work via Patreon. You can go to Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash the War Eagle Reader. Tons of little options for giving. Two bucks a month, five bucks, whatever the Lord puts on your heart. You get some free content, some exclusive stuff, and you get uh, you get on the list for the uh, the free books once those books start uh, coming out. And they will one day. Promise. Thanks for listening.